I'm Peter Sidwell and welcome to my kitchen. I am joined by Joe, a dietitian today in the kitchen, and we are going to cook a delicious recipe for you. And we're really just going to cook, create, taste some amazing food and talk about nutritional value of food. Now, I've been working with California prunes for some years now, and I have created many, many a recipe. But this time I actually get to find out your perspective as a dietitian, as to where all the goodness is and what it's doing for me uh, and how I can improve my nutritional value of my cooking. So no pressure, Joe, but okay. looking forward to this Up one. To the challenge. So today what I thought I would do is I think food waste is, is quite an important subject at the moment. And we're going to touch on it today with the recipe we're going to create. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that this was something that was just super rich, full of goodness, and tastes amazing. I always want my food to taste really good, um, and I always try and add nutritional value wherever I can. So today we're gonna do some really nice, we're gonna use up some roast chicken leftovers from yesterday, which I'm sure many of you out there will open the fridge, maybe on a Monday after a Sunday lunch, and you know, you've got some chicken there and what are you gonna do with it? So I've got something that will make it taste amazing, okay? So, often have a half a roast chicken left over in the fridge? Yeah, and actually reducing food waste is one of the best ways we can be sustainable these days yeah. with our eating. So I'm quite excited about this. Chefs actually love leftovers because it offers up so many, like chefs love to make their gross margins in their commercial kitchens. <laughs> yeah, That's course. where yeah, it comes yeah, yeah. from. Um, there's a lot of pressure there to make profit. Um, and some of the most famous dishes are out of leftovers historically. Um, and this it, is a new one. New it challenges yeah. you, you know, what, right, what can you make with that? You know, it, when I was a young chef training, the head chef would go, right, you're doing staff dinner, what are you going to make with that? And that's where it kind of comes from. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a dressing first. So one clove of garlic, and it's quite important that we just use one clove. Otherwise, everything tastes of garlic because it's raw and we're using it raw. We need to be sparing with it, okay? So... I'm just gonna shred it really, really fine. You could use a garlic crusher if you wanted to. I have no problem with that. I just use a knife for everything, really. So, I'm just gonna get rid of that little piece there. Now, let's get our garlic into the bowl in the middle, okay? So, we're gonna try and make a really nice dressing because the chicken will just sort of absorb the flavors. And rather than just using chicken, I want to use California prunes as well because of their meaty, sort of texture um, when you chop them up. So let's get some lemon juice in there as well. So full of vitamin C, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, th I love cooking with lemons. I just do it all the time. So squeeze it into your hand, catch the pips, and just sort of let it drip through your hand. Lemon and garlic, such a good combination mm -hmm. of flavors. It just, then when you hit it with some good extra virgin olive oil, I mean, oh, it's just the best for me. There we go. Good top tip as well, if you've got lemons, pack them in a big jar full of salt and mm -hmm. leave them four to six weeks and then you can add them to your tagines, mm. um, Moroccan food, salted lemons, it's amazing. Really, really good. So it's like food waste again, you know, making up, mm -hmm. trying to use up as much as possible. So we've got some dried oregano here that we're gonna add. It's one of the very few dried herbs I actually like. I'm very much fresh herb kind of chef. Yeah. I'll, fresh herbs to me, I couldn't cook without them. When you make it a dressing, you want one third acid. So whether it's lemon juice, lime juice, vinegars, and then two thirds oil for me, gives you a nice sort of guide as a ratio to work to. Okay, and then just a little bit of salt, not too much because I would imagine your roast chicken that we're going to add has probably had some salt on it as well. A little bit of pepper in there. And that is our dressing, really. It smells delicious from here. Just smells smell fresh, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? it's really nice. Just give it a good stir. Get it all ready. I like this bowl because you can kind of see everything that's going on. It's interesting you make the, put the dressing in first. So yeah. I would normally add it at the end, but you put everything into this. That's well, my theory is I want everything to soak. I want the dressing yeah. to kind of enrobe everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I never really quite get why people pour dressing on the top. top yeah. 
because there's nothing on the bottom going to yeah. work. So that's kind of my, my theory. So let's put that to one side. Now I've got my beautiful California prunes. Very much using them for that kind of texture, sort of adding to the sort of adding that similar texture to what you get from the meat, the chicken leftovers. So, you know, and obviously gives great nutritional value, full of fiber, aren't they? Loads of fiber, yeah. And actually fi fiber is so important. We don't get anywhere near enough of it in no, our No, I've heard that, it's, yeah. Yeah, and it's sort of getting worse, actually, because often if you're busy, you just reach for something from the shelf. Yeah. And, but actually, when you make something like this, which is fairly quick and easy and simple, you can get all those additional benefits from things like fiber. And what would be your top tip for getting more fiber in? What's the easiest way? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Right. And beans and lentils and things like that. You can use them from a tin. Yeah. Things like um, this that you can keep in your fridge. So prunes keep for ages. Yeah, well, they're ambient as well, exactly. aren't they? They just sit in a cupboard. And you can just add them to whatever you want. So today you're adding them to mm. this, but you can add them to sweet things. You can add them to your porridge. You can just grab them off the shelf. You know, they're easy to fit in to like your healthy, balanced diet. and lifestyle. Yeah. So they're, they're really nice. But... One of the things, one of the reasons that we need fibre yep. is it, not only does it help our digestive processes, mm. so it helps food move through the digestive system, yep. but also while it's in the digestive system, it's feeding the bacteria that lives there. Right. And the bacteria that live there do lots and lots of useful jobs. So including things like um, training the immune system and making nutrients and extracting, you know, other nutrients from the food that we eat. So it's a really, really important part of being healthy and when you don't get enough fiber you don't can't support the range of bacteria that we really need so it's a really symbiotic relationship between us and the bacteria mm. that do all of these amazing jobs for us there's a lot going on isn't there yeah. that there's we a, don't realize and there's a study that came out fairly recently actually that showed that if you eat 30 different plant foods in a week you have a much wider range of bacteria in your gut that are doing all of these really useful jobs than if you only ate 10 plant foods a right. week. And I was having a look at this recipe and I was counting up the, the different types of plants and we've got like 10 or something in here. In one dish. In one dish. That's so great. 30 sounds like a lot, but actually if you can get them all in yeah. in one dish, it's easy. There you go, a little tick for me. Right, I'm gonna get the chicken out. Okay, so roast chicken. Now I actually think this recipe if you didn't have a roast chicken, it would still be absolutely delicious. I'm just demonstrating how to use up a little bit of leftovers from a family that, off, you know, family meals often have something like this. And you could use any meat, could you? Any kind of, like, beef or anything? Yeah, like I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think red meat for me probably doesn't necessarily take the lemon juice mm -hmm. and olive oil and things like that. But you could, you could pork would work. Yeah. Chicken certainly works. Um, you could use some cooked salmon if you wanted. That would work quite mm. nicely. Um, if you wanted to, you could add lentils or something like that to it. You don't necessarily have to add meat to it. Roasted aubergine, I find, is a really mm. good sort of textural meat replacement. I tend to peel the aubergine, slice it and shred it, and then fry it all off. Uh, and we often use that for different things. But... Because we've got this dressing and this chicken is cooked, what we can do is just take the meat off the bone. I'm going to get rid of the skin because I don't need that. And I'm not going to chop it, I'm going to tear it like this. Yeah. And it will then absorb the dressing. Um, and, the, and really, you want to sort of leave it for 10, 15 minutes in the dressing and it will just drink up the flavour of the dressing and taste amazing. And chicken and prunes are both low in saturated fat as well. So this is quite a nice low cholesterol. Yeah. Recipe as well. I mean, you could just cook a chicken, a skinless chicken yeah. breast, and do the same thing. It's just often people end up with a bit of chicken left over and do nothing more than put it in a sandwich mm -hmm. or a salad, and not very interesting. But this, you know, if you're at, you know, you put this into a lunchbox on a Monday morning and have a much more interesting meal. So all I'm going to do is just turn everything over in the dressing and you'll see the sort of the dressing disappear a little bit because it's just soaking into the chicken and then just I'm just going to press it down and let it absorb all those flavors it's going to get the olive oil it's going to get the lemon juice and then what I'm going to do for a bit of crunch 
is I'm going to add some hazelnuts. Yes, another high fiber food as well. So actually, one of the great things about using lots of plant foods in, in a recipe, especially things like prunes, which are really mm. high in fiber, is they just keep you full for longer. Right. So if you were to grab like a processed ready meal off the shelf or something like that, you know, you wouldn't get the same, I don't know, satisfaction from right. it that lasts all day. So this is perfect for a lunchbox. Whereas if you're grabbing something refined or processed, yeah. actually that, it doesn't have that level of fiber in it generally. Yeah. So no, that makes sense to me. Wrong. So I'm going to add in, say, I don't know, two thirds of it. And then we'll sprinkle the remaining on the top at the end. I always roast my nuts as well because I think they get that. They become nuttier and crunchier. Can you buy them ready roasted? I'm just thinking. I think you can. For a friend. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you can buy them roasted. Obviously, you pay a premium for yeah. it because somebody's done something for yeah. you. Um, but you can get them roasted. But they are so much more crunchy and nutty um, than, than the shop-bought ones. So we're going to let that rest for a minute. Now's the time to make a slaw. So... Coleslaw is now the trendy way to call them a slaw, isn't it? Fennel has to be one of my favourite ingredients. I love the freshness of it, and I tend to use it instead of cabbage for coleslaws and things like that. We're going to go red pepper, which I believe has more vitamin C in than an orange. Am I right? You're, yeah, you are quite right. Yeah. I'm right. There you go. Although people spent by weight, you usually eat an orange and then that has more vitamin C than the oh, amount no, of red pepper. Oh, no, I thought I was right there. If you, as long as you eat the same weight in red pepper. Gotcha. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. But actually, things like even parsley. Parsley is really high in vitamin C as well. Right. Yeah. I but suppose the, the green vegetables, isn't it? Dark green leafy dark vegetables. Green leafies. Anything red. In fact, all fruit and vegetables has lots of vitamin C in it. So right. It's not something that people are generally okay. deficient in. If you think about deficiency conditions, so deficiency in vitamin C is scurvy. Yes. And we don't see a lot of that no. <laughs> these days. No. It was, yeah, it was from the ships, wasn't yeah. it, when they were on yeah, the boats and right. stuff. Okay, so fennel. Cut the bottom off, and then we're going to cut it in half. Do you eat a lot of fennel? I do. I love it, yeah. I love it raw. Not yeah. a big fan of it cooked. I quite like it roasted. Do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've just I... been trying to get my kids into it. Okay. So... What I also want to do is, I thought we would taste this mm -hmm. with just a California prune. Because I think this is a really interesting combination of flavours. Now, I'm just, it's really important when you're making the slaw that you take your time and you shred this fennel as fine as you can. The finer you cut it, the nicer it is to eat. So can you use one of those slicer things? Yeah, you can use a mandolin if yeah, you mandolin, want. If great. you're not comfortable... Um, chopping it with a knife but if you just sort of take your time and what you'll notice when I chop I'm not chopping up and down I'm chopping through right. because I'm using the edge of the blade of the knife I'm using the edge to push through and it, it's true what they say you are safer with a sharper knife because it's more effortless right. and it is easier to cut than you know if you were trying when you're trying to really cut something with a blunt knife that's when you're gonna cut yourself but yeah you could use a mandolin no problem at all you know, if you were making loads of it, if you had like a barbecue or something like that, or friends around, you could just use a food processor mm -hmm. or a slicer if you want. And I think you can actually use a peeler and just sort of oh, peel yeah, it yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. to. Um, but I like to chop. I'm sort of quite, I chop every day doing something or other, so I'm kind of quite natural with it. Mm -hmm. Spent so many years chopping that you just get used to it. So I'd love for you to try some fennel and some California prune together. So wrap that round okay. and taste it and tell me what you think. I think the fragrance and the aniseed mm. and the clean, fresh flavour. It's like an explosion, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm. really, really fresh. The, the prunes have like a real richness and the, the fennel's so, yeah, like bright. Mm. It's, a, it's kind of a it's contrast. It's as well. Mm. It, it's a really, really good combination. Um, it works so well. So, and particularly at the end, you can kind of, mm. the fennel, it's, it's a bit like when you have a, like a polo or something, it lingers, doesn't yeah. it, afterwards? And it's the same with the fennel, it kind of just lingers. Fennel's a very polarising thing as well. A lot of people will go like, Oof, no, because they've had a really bad experience with Perno or something like that <laughs> yeah. as a teenager. And they're like, I cannot I think we do can all relate to that. that. <laughs> or they're like, oh, I never knew I liked it. 
this. Mm -hmm. But I think it works so well with so many ingredients and, and so good for you. It's good for the digestive system, isn't it? Yeah, fennel? again, yeah, really good. And it's really high in fibre, so we've mm. got all of those things going on in this recipe. So, fennel done, red onion, and we're going to slice that as well. I've gone for red onion, just sort of milder, sort of slightly sweeter, savoury flavour. I think a white onion's just too strong, mm -hmm. and all you would taste. And if you can't get a red onion, spring onions would do exactly the same, or green onions or scallions. I got told off when I went to America cooking, because not one of them knew what a spring onion was. I didn't realise that they don't call them yeah. that over there, until I'd sort of said. And they're all sat there googling, what's a spring onion? <laughs> But, and we do have a very global audience, so if you're out there and it's not a spring onion, it's a green onion or a scallion. Now, carrots. We have to be very careful in this studio kitchen because if Pip the dog hears a carrot being cut, she's here. But luckily, she's uh, tucked away in the garden somewhere. So, now, if you have any questions about the recipe today, please do post them in the comments below. And if you want the recipe, please scan the QR code along the bottom or go to californiaprunes.net website. Go to the recipe section and there are tons of ideas, recipes, hints and tips for you on how to get California prunes into your kitchen. So, carrots, nice and again, the finer you can chop them, the nicer this dish is. I suppose it's got all that surface area to have to cling the, the oil. And yeah, the and, and, it, and it's just having sort of the nice mm. crunch. I just... Like, you can't chuck that in it, because, you yeah. know, you've got to slice it up nice and fine. So it's, it's nice to take the time. Knife skills is an important thing in the kitchen. I think it's probably one of the most important skills to be able to sort of chop everything nicely. And it doesn't matter whether you can do it fast or slow. Just take your time, do it right, um, and you'll reap the rewards. Do you, what's your favourite thing to cook? Um, I I really really like cooking curry. Do you? Yeah, because it can take some time, mm. but it's quite meditative, and you've got all those lovely flavours and smells in the kitchen. I, I think that's it's the smell mm. of it in the kitchen when I'm cooking them. I think. And got the kids eating curries? Yes. Yeah, the they're kids. good for it, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're quite. Um, I actually think kids like stronger flavours than we give them credit for. I think when I was doing, um, I used to. Um, do some work with a baby food company. Right. It's always saying to them, you know, you've got to get some flavour in there because otherwise they all just taste the same. Yeah. So you get a generation of children just don't like flavour much. Yeah, exactly. Or are not they, used unless to it. it's yeah. just butternut squash. Yeah. <laughs> just well, by yeah. Itself. yeah. Yeah. So I've always sort of, and the kids have to eat whatever's in front of them. Oh, okay. So they yeah. are they pretty good eaters. They are really good. Oh, eaters that's now. good. It's yeah. good that they can have that kind of relationship. Yeah. They nice go and through early. phases though. Like there's yeah. always a phase like oh. Mushrooms have been quite tricky. Bone of contention, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I didn't like mushrooms as a kid. I think I, I was probably... Either, but now I love them. They're like yeah. A, oh, I don't like my mum cooking them, still. <laughs> my mum's terrible at cooking mushrooms. Terrible. Have you told her that? Or yeah. I, I will now? always... Yeah. <laughs> I often get asked, oh, who was your inspiration? I bet your mum was a great cook. And I'm like, no. Terrible. <laughs> Awful cook. She's better now she's retired. But she, like, two, two teenage boys, I think it's a pretty thankless task, yeah. isn't it, cooking That's for them? That's the thing, you know, the breakfast, lunch and dinner yeah. cooking is a bit different from creating an yeah. amazing dish. And if you spend hours slaving over a hot stove and then you put it down on the table and they're like, oh, what's that? It's yeah. really soul-destroying. I know, it is. <laughs> it is, yeah. Okay, so what we've got, we've got our fennel shredded. I mean, you can see it's super colourful and... Eating colourful food is yep. really important, yeah? It is, yeah. The colours represent different nutrients. So, right. for example, the, the carrots have this thing called beta carotene, and you mm. find that in red and orange and yellow fruits and vegetables. There'll be some in the peppers as well. But also we've got vitamin C in there. We've got loads of different things. And then from the spinach, which is the yeah. dark green, those dark green leafy veg are often really um, high in iron and calcium and other micronutrients like that. So, yeah, getting a range of them you know, different things with different, in different combinations on different days means that you're covering all the bases. Brilliant. Right. So, in with all our ingredients into the spinach. And it's really important that you do this at the last minute as well because what you don't want is the vegetables, sorry, the spinach to wilt with the acidity of the vegetables, okay? So, if you're going to make this and you're maybe not having it for an hour or so, don't mix it. Just leave it like that. 
you leave it like that, it'll be fine. And then the minute you're going to serve it, that's when we mix it all together and get all those lovely textures and flavors working. So you could serve this just as a straight salad, no problem at all. Absolutely no problem. And it's super colorful. You know, you could serve this up with anything, really. It, it doesn't have to be this way. And then we're gonna take our roasted walnuts, so we've got some nice crunch. You could have some seeds in there, you could add whatever you like. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil there, just for that kind of silkiness and that texture. So we've got our slaw there, we've got our chicken, and we're gonna mix that up now. And can you see how little liquid yeah. is in dressings left? It's absorbed into the chicken and it's absorbed into the California prunes. So they've kind of become a vessel for flavor. And it just kind of wraps flavor around all the ingredients and sort of brings them together. And I think that's often what makes a really good dish is when you get the synergy and the harmony of everything all working together, sort of pulling together. So, now you could just serve these as a salad if you wanted to. Um, you can also serve them like in a wrap or in a sandwich or anything you like. But what I thought I would do is I'll take some baby gem lettuce and we'll actually use the baby gem as our vessel to eat. So we can fill the baby gem lettuce and use it as a wrap so it becomes, it's a gluten-free in its own right. But you could just as easily serve it up in a wrap, a baguette, whatever you choose. But these could sit as well in your lunchbox if you wanted to take them to work or wherever you are. You like to do this sort of thing, don't you, Emily? Right. So, I'll make you want to try, Joe. see Thank what you. you think. So, we've got our slaw on the bottom. And I haven't put any um, vinegar or anything like that on, on the dressing because it's in there. Yeah. That's where the big flavours are with the California prunes and the chicken and the hazelnuts. And you'll sort of get that hit of flavour. And you get the texture from the prunes as well. You get a little bit of crunch. Let me just grab you a little plate. There we go, an edible wrap to go with it. There you go. Exciting. Have a little Very taste nice. of that and see what you think. Okay. I'm gonna make myself one as well. Mm. That's really tasty. So I think, I think it takes something fairly sort of, the, you know, kind of not memorable mm -hmm. and makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting. And so I, you came up with this by just wanting to, to use up some leftover chicken. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm. I love the way the lemon juice and the garlic have mm. just kind of penetrated into the prunes and the chicken and just gives it like... It doesn't feel like leftovers, does it? And it's not hard to make. No. At all. Really easy. And then you get really nice crunch on the hazelnuts as well. Mmm. Delicious. Now, if you want the recipe, please scan the QR code along the bottom. It will take you to californiaprunes.net website. There are loads of recipes there. If you have any questions about today's recipe, for either me or for Joe, Please post them in the comments below and we will answer them as soon as we possibly can. But thank you very much for joining us. Joe. thank you for joining thank me in my you. kitchen. It's been really interesting getting a totally different perspective on food and cooking. It's been fascinating. I think both me and Emily have learned some loads of information that we didn't know about food. But thank you very much for joining us and I'll see you next time.